I want to kick things off with something that has been puzzling and enraging me in equal measure. Just as I said, we've been reporting all week from Scotland where Nicola Sturgeon's SNP has passed a hugely controversial bill, to say the least. The bill will allow men, women and teenagers as young as 16 to self-identify as the opposite gender without any need for a medical diagnosis. Now there's talk, though, that the UK government could step in and block the legislation. The Prime Minister has said that the government is taking a close look at the bill and the Secretary of State for Scotland Scotland, Alistair Jack, has issued a statement raising the possibility that he could invoke powers to block the bill from going for royal assent and essentially take the Scottish government to court. David, should we be calling on the government to block this bill? Yeah, absolutely. It's an insane bill and not many people in Scotland actually want it. It seems that the Scottish Parliament has been taken over by a group of cultural Marxists who are in hock to some very, very aggressive trans activists, which are a small in number, and they want to impose their will on the rest of society and just completely change what are societal norms. Look, there are two sexes, male and female, and your sex is determined, your biological sex is determined by by your anatomy and by your chromosomes. But over the last 50 or 60 years, um, people have developed this concept of gender that was introduced by some really crazy academics in the 1950s. And this idea has been mainstreamed that there's something called gender that is different to biological sex. So there's not two genders, there's a hundred different genders, but you can change your gender whenever you want. And now you've got the Scottish Parliament saying, well, whenever you decide, even if you're, you know, 16 or over, you can say, that you're male if you're actually female or female if you're actually male. The th whole thing doesn't make any sense to anyone uh, with a sound mind. So if the government in Westminster can overturn this, good for them. They should do it. Do you think that sex and gender are two different things, Paul? Well, I mean, I, I Bit don't... Bit of a controversial question. It's a controversial question. I mean, sex for me is immutable, biological sex. Um, I mean, when, as you said in the introduction, people, uh, in order to obtain a gender recognition certificate, are told they have to live within that gender for a certain amount of time. Well, what does that actually mean? Mm. What does it mean to say, in order to prove that you're a woman, you have to live as a woman for three months or whatever it is. Does it mean wear a dress well, and Well, this, this is the thing. Do you, do you wear pink? Do you wear your hair in plaits? Do you play with dolls? I mean, surely the whole point of breaking down those gender stereotypes is that women and girls weren't categorised in that mm. way and could actually move into occupations, industries, hobbies, pastimes that once upon a time were denied to them because they were told, well, no, these things are, are for, for boys and men. Um, and my fear really, Emily, is, is women's struggle over recent decades where, where women have genuinely fought for equality, they've fought for privacy, they've fought for security in public spaces, in the workplace and so on, is in danger, I think, of being unpicked. Um, all of those advancements that women won are in danger of now unravelling as a result of what I see as a barking mad piece of legislation, which ultimately, as David said, renders the whole concept of womanhood effectively meaningless. Well, that's, that's, what, what, it does. that's what pains me the most out of all of this, not just the safety concerns or the privacy concerns, as you mentioned, is just fundamentally diluting what it means to be a woman. If you are legally a woman because you have essentially worn a dress for three months or uh, whatever else that shows you are female in gender, suddenly, according to the law, you are a woman and, and, and on why, equal footing and, with a woman in many, many ways. That just seems absolutely absurd. But some people liken this whole thing to um, the campaign for gay rights. Do you think those two are comparable? No, I, I think it's an insult to, to gay people, actually, who, who fought for liberation, who, who fought for equality for, for so long, to say that actually this is exactly the same thing. Um, it's clearly not the same thing at all. I think there are clearly here... First, first of all, you know, as I said, it, it renders the concept of womanhood meaningless. Um, but also, as a husband and a father, the idea that I would want my daughter um, to be in a... Uh, a public space in a changing room, for example, uh, and somebody who is clearly still a biological male but no, you know, d d decides on a particular day to declare himself to be a woman um, and therefore thinks that he has the right to access those spaces. I mean, I think any ordinary husband and father is going to be 
concerned about that, about the impact on women's safety and security. Well, I mean, thank goodness for people like J.K. Rowling and Helen Joyce and people who have stood up against what I think, and I think we can all agree, is total madness. But coming back to the issue of Nicola Sturgeon and what butting mm. in um, from Westminster might do, do you think that would... How do you think that would go down in Scotland? Well, she would play it politically mm. and she would say, well, this is England, Westminster interfering with Scotland, therefore there's a case for Scottish independence. But I think we've got to look at this issue separately. This is nothing to do with Scottish independence. This is about the fundamental reality and nature of humanity and, uh, and, uh, and what we are as men and women. And this is more important than, you know, worrying about what Nicola Sturgeon might say about Scottish independence. Mm. If we have the power to use um, to stop this, and w I, I think maybe we need to save Scotland at this point. Well, I think this, a lot of Scots would be happy. Yeah. May I just, we're getting some very interesting um, emails in from you at home, so I'm just going to read out a couple and we can, we can react to those. Gareth in Bridgen says, I suspect Sturgeon has rushed this bill through knowing Westminster would react negatively. This gives Sturgeon the perfect launch pad to tell Scots how dare they, we need independence to make our own decisions. I'd agree with you, Gareth, if it weren't for the fact that most Scots don't seem to support this bill. Well, this is, this is the thing. I mean, there's a danger here that Nicola Sturgeon, in her rush to, to prove herself to be, you know, the most radically progressive mm. leader in, in Scotland and the SNP, the most radically progressive party, um, have overplayed their hands to some degree. Because I can't imagine that people in Scotland are actually that much different to people in England. No. I suspect <laughs> a lot of people in Scotland are probably looking at this kind of stuff. Um, mainstream voters in Scotland and thinking, hold on a second, this does not resonate with me. I've got real concerns about this. Um, because it seems to me to have been a fringe issue for, for some years now. It seems to have been uh, a very vocal but well-organised minority. Um, very well-organised. Who are, you know, claiming prejudice, claiming discrimination. And actually the argument that trans people are some of the most discriminated against in our society is fundamentally not true, actually. When you look at the stats, it, it's not actually true. People talk about how hate crimes against transgender people have risen. But, but that's explained by, by improved kind of reporting yeah. methods and more social awareness and things like that. Um, and, and there are no, actually, when you think about it, there are no rights mm. that trans people don't have that, that other people have. So we need to kind of get this in perspective. And I'm not sure, actually, how we say that other forms of cultural uh, appropriation are unacceptable. But when it comes to women, we say, no, it's, ab it's absolutely fine to don a dress and to wear high he heels and to wake up one morning and to say, I'm a woman and I know what it's like to be a woman. But when we talk about blackface, for example, people say that's completely unacceptable. But Why do we make an exemption for women? Why do we say that it's so meaningless that anybody can just become a woman? But it's just totally playing into stereotypes, isn't it? Which, which is what fem feminists uh, wanted to um, stop change. Now, very interestingly, Judith, a Scottish woman, she says, as a Scottish woman, Sunak must stop this bill. Marion says, please, please, GB News, can you stand up for the rights of women, children and parents and put pressure on Suella Braverman and the British government to end this transgender law without any safety amendments? So... There's a Scottish yeah, woman. Absolutely. I mean, with these people, Suella Braverman particularly, says she wants to stand up against wokery. I actually was a speech, at a speech in 2019, at uh, the Bruges Group, where she actually mentioned cultural Marxism for the first Suella. time. Suella. Suella Braverman yeah. said that in a speech. She's said for many, many years she wants to fight this and stand up for it. Well, this is your time, Suella Braverman. This is your time, Rishi Sunak. I mean, to the, be the, fair the, to Suella, she's got a lot yeah. on her plate. Yeah, true, but I mean, well, whoever's got to make the decision. Yeah, I think the other has that, already spoken you know, out. Th this is a party, the Conservative Party in Westminster, that has been so non-conservative, so anti-conservative, really, I think, for most of the 12 years it's been in power since the 2010 elections. But they always... Uh, you know, uh, protest that they are actually really genuine conservatives. This is a chance yeah. to actually do something that is really conservative. I mean, well, there you go. You heard it from nonsense. David. I have to say, I've got no faith in the conservative part. I mean, we, we hear noises off sometimes. We hear the likes of Suella Braverman stand up against it. Um, but actually, you know, in terms of the, the kind of wokery that we're seeing embedded within our society now, how, when, did, when was it introduced? It was introduced during a conservative government. Mm. 
I mean, the Tories have been in power for the last 12 years or whatever it is. And actually, that kind of hyper-progressive agenda has seeped deeper and deeper into our society. And they've been in charge. So, so you know, they haven't pushed back against it, as far as I can see. Whenever, whenever they're called upon to challenge some of the more radical things that, that are implemented in our society, they never really do so. To be fair, though, to be fair, in Scotland, Labour have been totally 100% complicit, by the sounds of it, um, with this bill going through. They don't seem to have standed up. I've seen the likes of J.K. Rowling pleading ple pleading with the, uh, the Labour Party to actually stand up against this bill, because there aren't enough Conservatives up in Scotland to do so. Well, well, as I we've part, seen... Part of that, Emily, is because, look, the truth is we have got a generation of politicians these days who are absolutely petrified of saying no to a, a vocal minority who are claiming mm. prejudice and discrimination. And sometimes you do have to say it, particularly in a case like this, where the right that are being demanded are likely to impact in a negative way on the rights of other groups of yeah. people, you have to say, on this occasion, do you know what, you're wrong. We're not going to accept it. We're not going to do what you want. But because we've got politicians who are petrified of being called nasty names on Twitter... Mm -hmm. They haven't got the backbone to do it. That's the truth of it. Well, it's quite interesting what Adrian here said, to David, in, in Sheffield. He says, the Scots need to know the power is in their hands. If they agree with the woke insanity, vote SMP. If they don't, then find an alternative candidate. So essentially, I think he's what he's saying is that SMP have proven themselves that they are insane in this respect, in, yeah. in, in Adrian's words, and therefore that might force a change of government. So perhaps it's a good thing. I hope so. Unfortunately, the last Scottish elections were, I think, 2021, isn't it? So there's not going to be any more mm. true, uh, yes. elections in the Scottish Parliament until 2026. So they've got a long time to wait. I mean, so actually with this, it's really got to be the case that the Westminster government intervenes now because there isn't a chance to vote them out for another four and, years. And, and, and when that happens, I hope, well, there'll be new party standing. We will be standing <laughs> in <laughs> Scotland as it's a to, to be blunt, change. The, the, Quick word the from you before we go to some more The Westminster social. government may have no option but to intervene because if it can be demonstrated that this law in Scotland clearly does contradict laws, UK-wide laws in terms of the Equality mm -hmm. Act 2010, for example, they will have to intervene. Their hand will be forced Well, to give some balance for the other point of view is that um, many people who have campaigned for this change would argue that the Equality Act protects women in, even with this legislation insofar as places are allowed to still be um, divided in terms of sex. So you can still have um, prisons that are based on sex, not gender, and so on and so forth. But the problem is, is that so many institutions are indoctrinated mm. with this ideology that they don't wish to be sex-based anymore, as we saw with how what happened when J.K. Rowling said that she was opening up a women-only refuge for only biological women. She got a lot of heat for that. Um, Jeff has said the reason she and her misguided following have pushed this legislation through is so that she can claim interference from the UK government when they stop it. I think that's a good point. Um, but of course, the Scots don't support it either. At least the majority don't. Gary says it's obvious that Sturgeon has purposefully chosen a bill that Westminster is likely to overturn. Again, she can then claim that Scotland is unable to pass its own laws and therefore engineer support for another referendum. I mean, it's a compelling argument, but I'm, I, I'm not sure in the case of this bill, because this is a deeply controversial mm. and disliked bill. Um, 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 Janine says, would you be happy if your wife or daughter, whilst in a women-only changing room shower, was confronted by a naked biological man asserting that he was a woman? No, I don't think I would be happy. I don't have a daughter yet, uh, but I certainly wouldn't be happy. I think a lot of men are worried for their daughters, actually. Yeah, and, and they have every right to be. And, you know, I do wonder how many of these MSPs who voted the legislation through um, do have young daughters. I suspect not many of them do, because if they did have, um, I think they would have probably thought about it a little bit I think bit ideology harder. just blinds people. Maybe, and, and as I said, you know, cowardice in terms of being called nasty names. Um, but I think it's an entirely legitimate thing to say, look, as the, as the father of a, of a child, a, a, a female daughter... Um, I do not want my daughter to, to be compelled to share what, in my view, should be a single sex space for women um, with biological men, regardless of whether or however they identify. Um, I, I, it shouldn't happen, and, yeah. and I would stand against it, and I think most fathers would in this country.